And I'm going to switch courses a little bit now, and I'm going to switch to a bit of the genetics, the stuff that's involved all of us, that's really taken over our life in a sense of prenatal diagnosis and in first trimester particularly, and the evolution of changes that are really happening with uh, the first trimester. And while we are making tremendous strides at making earlier diagnosis, the work that Dr. Bromley showed you, uh, that Dr. Abu Hamid showed you, that Dr. Ben Asif showed you, the things that are possible and doable are only doable because of our imagination to start working at it and looking at it. And the same things happen in the non-invasive testing world of cell-free DNA and uh, other aspects. So by disclosure, you have that in the handouts as well. I do a number of consulting work with General Electric, Illumina, do research support with them, and uh, LabCorp, and NuvoCare, and, and Pulsamore. None of it is related really to this specific talk. I think we all realize that what we're doing in ultrasound and what we're doing in prenatal diagnosis is trying to identify problems ahead of birth. Giving patients options is particularly important. It's not a search and destroy mission. It's an opportunity for patients to know what's going on and an opportunity really to see what can be done. And if you think back two decades and think about, I remember when I actually I was privileged to be one of the reviewers for the MOMS trial, the first open spina bifida trial of care. And I scratched my head first, do I really want to do this? Do they really think they can do it? And look where we are today with non-invasive, with minimally invasive, shouldn't say non-invasive, minimally invasive endoscopic repairs. It's absolutely amazing. So if you put your mind to something, we're going to be able to do it. And the same thing's happened here with prenatal diagnosis. And so when we look at structural changes, we know that a lot of them are related to chromosomal changes or subchromosomal changes. And if you just look through here, fortunate for all of us, the majority of pregnancies are normal. And when patients say to me, if I make a diagnosis, oh my God, how did this happen? I flip it around the other way and say, think about it a moment. What does it really take to make a normal baby? What has to take place? What is it? the miracle of birth is an amazing phenomenon because we really get to see normalcy the majority of the time. It's that 3% of the time where it's not normal, and we begin to see on those aspects, we can see that many of them, most of them are chromosomal to prenatal exposure that could happen. Uh, single gene genetics was becoming very important in the non-invasive world as well. But of course, multifactorial, and still in this big bucket here of unknowns, about 40 to 60% of malformations that we see, we don't know why it happens. We may know when it happens, but we're getting closer to understanding that with some of the molecular genetics that